we meet in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, whose will it is that wars may cease and all people know his peace. Seventy-five years ago today, Winston Churchill announced to the people of the United Kingdom that the war in Europe was over. Today, we give thanks for the peace which followed nearly six years of World War. We commemorate the lives of all those who died in armed conflict or as civilians. We remember the sacrifices made by so many at home and abroad. We hold before God all places of war and violence today, the members of the armed forces serving at this time and those they leave behind. And we pray in hope and faith for peace. Let us pray. Lord, our God, our defence in trouble and our refuge from the storm, hear us as we remember and pray for this 75th anniversary of victory in Europe. Let us never forget the sacrifices which won for us our freedom and bless your world with peace. We ask this in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostles to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ, who died more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During 1940, the Luftwaffe targeted Cardiff. Over 100 bombs attacked the city, dropping high explosive bombs, incendiary bombs and parachute mines. The Riverside and Canton areas were the first to be bombed. In Grangetown, the Hollyman Brothers Bakery was hit by a parachute mine and 32 people who were using the basement as a shelter were killed. When the raid was over, 165 people had been killed and 427 more injured, 
while nearly 350 homes were destroyed or had to be demolished. Close by in Swansea, 11,000 buildings were destroyed and 230 people killed. The heart of the town, or the old core, was lost in the bombardment, including some iconic buildings such as St Mary's Church, the port area and the old oil refinery. Richard Burton was a teenager at the time of the attack and documented the experience in his diary. He describes watching the burning of Swansea in utter awe from his home near Port Talbot. Today we gather again, 75 years later, in thanksgiving for our victory over what was the greatest darkness of the 20th century. This then is not only about victory in Europe, but also of the movement of reconciliation that marked the aftermath of this event. A reconciliation that strove for peace, which dismantled alienation and separation from our fellow human beings and our Creator. Such peace is an ongoing project for it has to address extremism and conflict, which destroys hope and any desire for an improved life. This involves a challenge to build a more Christ-like world. It is Jesus who calls us then to open our lives to the challenges that still lie before us, especially in our recent world coronavirus pandemic. This inevitably involves much sacrifice and determination in repairing any breaches of peace, justice and fears of hopelessness. St Paul, in his words of hope to the young church in Rome, provided for us the foundations for transforming our world. He reminds us that it will be sacrifice and struggle, and so we remember with thanksgiving and gratitude those who have already given their lives for peace and a better world. Yes, we struggle against darkness in whatever form it presents itself, remembering that as St Paul says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. With the arms then of Jesus firmly enfolding us in his love, we can overcome the darkness and in our own lives become a blessing to others. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the peace of the world, for the royal family, our nation, our government, for all the armed forces, for each other and for ourselves. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who've died in active service, particularly in the Second World War, whose sacrifice brought victory in Europe. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope now and forever. Lord, in thy mercy. O Lord of hosts, stretch forth, we pray, your almighty arm to strengthen and protect our servicemen and women, support them in times of conflict, and in their rest and training keep them safe from all evil, 
endure them with courage and loyalty, and grant that in all things may they may serve without reproach. Lord, in thy mercy. For the peace of the world, O God, who would fold both heaven and earth in a single peace, that the sign of your great love may lighten upon the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts. Lord, in thy mercy. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may do all, all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your glory and most holy name, and the good of your church and people. Lord, in thy mercy. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, is save that of knowing that we do thy will. Lord, in thy mercy. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us make an act of rededication together. Our nation fought for peace, that the world might never again know such violence and destruction. I ask each of you watching this video now, will you work for peace and reconciliation in your homes and communities and promote peace throughout the world? We fought for justice, that the scourge of prejudice and oppression might never take, gain take root in our societies. Will you work for a world in which hatred and injustice never have the final word, and where all people can flourish with dignity and hope? We struggled so that the whole human family might know goodwill, security and freedom. Will you always acknowledge how precious are the gifts which God has entrusted to us and exercise the freedoms and responsibilities you have with gratitude and humility? May Almighty God, who has given us the will to undertake all these things, give us his strength and grace to perform them. Amen. Let us make now an act of remembrance. So let us remember those who selflessly gave their lives at home and abroad, whose sacrifice enables us to enjoy the peace and freedom we have today. Let us remember those who came home wounded physically and mentally, and the friends and family who cared for them. Let us remember those who returned to restore their relationships and rebuild their working lives after years of dreadful conflict and turmoil. Let us remember the families that lost husbands, sons and sweethearts. Let us remember the servicemen, merchant seamen, miners, brave civilians and others from Commonwealth and Allied countries who fought, 
suffered and died during several years of war. Let us remember those in reserved occupation and the brave people who kept us safe on the home front, the doctors and nurses who cared for the wounded, the women and men who toiled in the fields, those who worked in the factories, who all played such a vital role in the war effort at home. Let us pray. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, help us to make your future in this world until your kingdom come. Amen. We sing the hymn.
and to God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace this day and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The National Anthems